What's going on guys, Super Insane 18 here, and yesterday I went undefeated taking second place at my locals, and I was playing new list adventure sprite, even beating out the old list because since the new list isn't legal, people are getting their last chances to play some things, and it was uh it was definitely interesting. I uh went undefeated, unfortunately took second due to tiebreakers, but yeah, wanted to bring you guys the list to show you guys what this deck can do without the Ronin Toten, so let's go ahead and jump on in. So we're going to kick things off with the same sprite lineup that I've been showing you guys all along, uh, which is going to be one copy of Sprite Carrot and one copy of Sprite Pixies. These are the only one of, they're the only ones that you really only need at one, um, because the next one, Sprite Red, I think is definitely a two of. I know that a lot of people play this at one, but consistency is more important than ever now, so having more names just inherently means more extenders. Not to mention that there are times later on in the game where you want to search this to summon it rather than having to reborn it from your graveyard, so I think two red is just objectively correct. Uh, then obviously we have our three copies of Sprite Blue and our three copies of Jet. I don't really think these need much explanation. They are the starters and the uh, searchers for the deck, so most important cards you need to run. Uh, then we are still playing an adventure package, so we have three copies of Water Enchantress and our one copy of Wandering Griffin Rider. Um, I think that this is still objectively the best variant. It might not be the best variant once Darkwing Blast comes out, because once Darkwing Blast come out, we get the new Link 2, and with the new Link 2, I feel like being able to use normal summons effects uh, might be more important, like Nimble Beaver, uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, I think that this is just objectively the best way to play it. We are still playing the frogs because we are not abandoning Toad. I don't think that abandoning Toad is smart. Granted, we no longer have a one card Toad combo. We do have a two card Toad combo. So I think that it's still worth running. Um, but I did cut the dupe, which I kind of regret. Um, and the reason I regret it is because of the next card I'm about to show you. But I think that moving forward, I might put the dupe back in. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to replace a card, if I'm just going to bump the deck count up by one card. Um, but I think the dupe is really important. And the reason that I think dupe is really important is because we are playing Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, so the game plan going into the tournament last night was ending on Toad, giving them Ibli, making sure I have a Sprite Smasher set to banish their normal summon, that way they can no longer link away the Ibli, essentially. Um, but then you run into the issue where they're just going to put the Ibli into attack and crash it, which, yeah, they waste their battle phase, they take some damage, um, but ultimately, I just want to lock them out of playing completely. Um, so if you have the Dupe Frog, you can summon the Dupe Frog off of your Totally Awesome, and then force the Ibli to attack into the Dupe Frog, which, if you were smart and summoned it in defense, they will not be able to crash the Ibli and continue to be locked out, so I think that that's just an incredible way of doing things, um, so I'm probably going to throw the Dupe back in. Uh, but that's it for the monsters. On to the spells, we obviously have our adventure spells with the one Draco back, the one Fateful, and the three Rite of Aramisir. Um, these didn't get hit on the list, a lot of people were expecting it. I didn't really think it needed to get hit. Um, in my prediction video, I put that maybe Rite would go to one, uh, just so that you only have four copies instead of six. Um, but I mean, this engine kind of fell off, honestly. Like, let's be honest, what decks have really been playing this other than the uh, like occasional adventure sprite? Um, so I can see why they didn't hit it, but since they didn't, we're still going to play it, and I think it's incredible. Um, but that's the adventure package. Then on to our one-ofs. We have one copy of Call by the Grave because this card is just absolutely crazy. We have one copy of Foolish Burial acting as a essentially seventh copy of Rite because we'll send the Enchantress to search the Rite. Um, and our one copy of Sprite Smashers. This card is incredible. Anybody who tells you otherwise, don't listen to them. Um, I think that this card is one of, if not the best cards in the deck. Uh, then we have two copies of Forbidden Droplet. Uh, Droplet is a card that I have a love-hate relationship with. If you guys have been watching the channel for any amount of time, you know that. I just tend to brick on Droplets, um, so I never want to play three anymore. Um, and plus, I just think that other board breakers are better. Like, yeah, Droplet is an insanely powerful card, but, like, you have to lose your resources to use it. And I just don't think that, that trade-off is really worth it in this particular build. So I'm only playing it at two. Um, but the other board breaker that I am playing is three copies of Dark Ruler No More. I think that board breakers are just infinitely better than hand traps, and I'm going to use this example every single time. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was playing the Mirror Match, I was playing Adventure Sprite, my opponent was playing Pure Sprite. He hand trapped me four times, and I still set up my full combo, um, whereas if any one of those four cards was a Dark Ruler, I was done for. Um, so now he's got one card left, he draws for turn, he's playing his turn with two cards into a multi-omni-negate board, um, so 
Yeah, honestly, I just think that Dark Ruler is probably mandatory in the main deck moving forward, because I just I, I do think it's just better than any hand trap you can play. Um, then we are playing three copies of oops, Pot of Prosperity. Um, I was going to cut this card before the list dropped, but I think now more than ever, consistency is more important. Uh, so I don't think that this can be cut anymore. I think that you have to play some kind of consistency card, like maybe if you want to do Desires, like if you're on a budget, uh, you can go ahead and do that instead of the Prosperity, but the Banish can be very steep. Um, granted, you no longer have to fear losing the one Ronin, but I still think Prosperity is just better and the way to go. Uh, so if you can afford them, definitely make sure you play them because consistency is key. Then we have our three copies of Sprite Starter. I don't really need to explain that, it's just the best way to start your turn. Uh, and then finishing things up, we have three copies of Tactics Talent. Not only can this be considered a board breaker because you can steal a monster your opponent controls, but it is also a consistency card, allowing you to draw two if you get hand trapped or if they have a monster effect on field, or it's even a uh, just hand killer. You can rip a card out of your opponent's hand and if they hand trapped you, now they're playing down more cards. And I think it's incredible. I won in the mirror match yesterday uh, because I activated starter. He asked me, I went Tactics forced him to use his elf essentially, and he couldn't use the elf to reborn the toad, because then I would just steal the toad. Um, and then I stole his elf and I used the elf for myself, and yeah, I think Tactics is incredible. That's the main deck at 40 cards. Like I said, maybe I'll bump it to 41 to add in the dupe, but let's show you guys the extra. All right, so the extra deck remains relatively unchanged, but I am trying some new options. So let's show you guys what it is. Uh, we have the one copy of Cat Shark. Again, I think anybody who is not playing this is just objectively wrong. The ability to bump your uh, Gigantic up to 6400 is one of the easiest ways to get game, which this deck really does struggle with. Uh, it struggles a little bit less when you're playing the Adventures because you add another 4,000 attack to your end board with the token and the uh, the Griffin Rider, um, but I still think that it's really important to have the Cat Shark. We have one copy of Onibumaru Soul Sweeper. I think that this is an absolute mandatory, if for no other reason, the fact that Flu Wanderies is likely going to see an uptick in play, being one of the two decks that can just inherently run D-Shifter uh, when we're going into a tier limit format. Uh, you can expect to probably see a lot of Fluanderies, and this card is the easiest way to out the Empen. You summon it in defense and banish the Empen, and then you no longer have to worry about not getting like your elf effect or being able to use the effects of special summon monsters. Um, plus, Empen is just a really big pain to get rid of because it can half the attack of anything you battle it with. So if you do the Soul Sweeper, it's pretty easy. Um, I think it's mandatory. We have the Sky Cavalry. This is mostly just for the Zeus package, which is uh, why we also play the Downard and the Zeus. Uh, so I think that that is just really self-explanatory. Um, this, even if you're not using it for Zeus, you can use it to get rid of threats that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get rid of um, because it's able to just shuffle things back into the uh, deck or returns them the hand yeah so it returns them the hand um so the way that i used it yesterday i was playing against despia i swung into a uh mirror jade um so i, I dark rolled him just so he couldn't use his effects swung into the mirror jade made the zeus and uh he wasn't able to activate the mirror jade effect because you don't get the effects when it returns the extra we are still playing the totally awesome again i don't think that this is worth cutting the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that in order to make this, when you summon your Swap Frog, do not link it into Elf like you would in previous combos. Keep the Swap on field and link the Gigantic and any other monster into your Elf. That way you have a Swap on field and a Swap in Grave. The Elf will reborn the Swap in Grave and you still make your Toad. That, that's really it, guys. You, you don't need to abandon this. If you want to abandon it, I will be showing you guys a no Toad list uh, after I test it, but I still think that Toad is the way to go. Obviously, we have two copies of Gigantic Sprite. That's it for the XYZs. Uh, now, onto the links. We are playing one copy of IP Mascarina and one copy of Nightmare Phoenix. IP Mascarina is for the hands where you cannot make the Toad. Um, there is a combo you can do, which I will explain in a little bit. Um, but not just that, this is really good to end on in the mirror match because especially now with Ronin gone, the normal summon is more important than ever. So if you can make something like a unicorn during your opponent's turn to just spin back your opponent's normal, then they're not really going to have any level twos on board. So unless they have starter, they're in a really bad spot. Um, and the Nightmare Phoenix is honestly only because of Gozen match. Uh, you play fires inherently, so being able to just make your fires into a Phoenix, get rid of the Gozen and continue. Um, plus you lock yourself into twos, so kind of important. We are playing three copies of Sprite Elf. 
this is the first time that I have played three copies. I have always only played two, and there have been times where I've sat there and wanted a third. Um, so I tried it out in this list because I had room, but honestly, I'm thinking I'm probably going to cut one of them for a Dark, the Dark Charmer, uh, just because I think that moving into the upcoming format, Tier Limit is going to be the uncontested best deck. So you need a little bit of something to kind of help you push through it, um, and Dark will allow you to link climb easier, get more materials easily, um, get stuff out of their graveyard. Um, so I, I think it's really important. I have to test it, but at the moment I'm playing three Elf. Uh, then we have our Nightmare Unicorn and our Topologic Zeroboros. The Zeroboros is for the IP combo. For those of you that don't know, I'm sure most of you do, but just want to explain it in case you do not. If you end your field on something like Sprite Elf and IP Mascarina, you can go Sprite Elf Chain 1, IP Mascarina Chain 2. IP turns the Elf and herself into the Zeroboros, and then the Elf will resolve, summoning a uh, monster from your graveyard into the zone that Zeroboros points to, essentially just wiping the board and giving you a follow-up because the Zeroboros will return and it's kind of just insane. So yeah, that is the extra deck. And there you guys have it. Hopefully you enjoyed. Like I said, I was playing the new list in a room full of people playing old list. So the fact that I was able to go undefeated just kind of speaks for how good the deck still is, even without the Ronin. I know that it's really not the biggest hit, but a lot of people were freaking out about it. And I know a lot of people are just completely abandoning the frogs, but I don't think you need to. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know the deal. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, comment, share with your friends. Maybe consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.